Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to the video. All right, so continuing with the Patreon unlocking um, content for you guys, I started looking through my videos that are the Patreon exclusives, and I found a 35-minute video of me inking this piece. So I thought that would be awesome to share. It was originally Patreon early access, but I guess I just forgot to ever post it on YouTube. But this is the finished piece, and we'll actually look at it a, a, a little bit once um, the video is done, too. But I'll talk a little bit about the process um, right now. So this was traditionally penciled on 11 by 17 board. Um, I did end up inking it over a blue line. So what I did is I scanned my pencils at 600 DPI created a blue line in Photoshop and you could also do that in Clip Studio. I do have a video on how to create blue lines. Um, uh, so if you search my channel, you could definitely find that and I've done it for Patreon as well. Um, and uh, I, I did that only because I didn't want to mess the piece up. I, I mentioned uh, funny enough in the um, other Patreon video that I unlocked that um, I will torture myself and be so picky on my own art that um, doing a piece like this and you know i just my fear was i would get halfway into it and just hate it and then either destroy it g getting frustrated and careless or um uh, destroy it meaning like just mess up you know what i mean like you get careless and you start rushing and all of a sudden you're like oh no what did i do and then you're trying to fix it and then you just go down this sort of vicious <laughs> it's like a cycle of um deconstructing the piece so it, it ended up going fine I wouldn't probably ink uh, any of the other pages with blue line unless there was just something that I did that I was really, really concerned um, and didn't understand the technique that I was going to use. So what is interesting about this final piece is that I, that I did actually end up using um, halftone patterns on it. Um, the reason being, and it's, it's not, I don't think I'm going to actually use it on the comic book, but... I have been looking at a lot of black and white art, and uh, I had mentioned that uh, I'm a big fan of um, Blam, B-L-A-M-E, exclamation point, and Abra, and I, I just love the look of the values that that comic book had, and, and, and I wanted that in this piece is a black and white, so it, th that was what I decided to do. I mean, I think it looks cool, you know, I'm down with it. I don't know, like, on your computer screen right now how it looks but but that's the only part that's digital um and the rest of it is traditional so it was fun to do i think maybe a little bit of extra lightning i did digitally but i just took like a pen tool and just drew drew over the um half of uh, the screen tone pattern but i mean that you almost kind of have to do so and you can ink splatter by using um well i mean you could do it digitally but you can also do it um with um i use acrylic white holbein h-o-l-b-e-i-n-n -N, um and it's uh an what is it called it used to be called arrow flash it's just called acrylic ink now it's a white airbrush ink but it flows really really well you can use it with a crow quill you can use it with a brush you can dilute it a tiny bit and splatter it you don't even need to dilute it to splat to, to splatter it but but you can so anyway so this is the piece so yes yeah, settle in um it was uh, an I don't know how long ago I shot the video. It wasn't that long ago, but I'm going to buy a new um, camera mount for, for any future uh, drawing videos. So the the camera angle will be a little bit different moving forward. But anyway, um, yeah, you'll see me inking the character. And uh, all right, let's get to it. Blaster Kid is coming. I'm finishing the script right now. Right as this is uploading and processing, that's what I'm going to be doing. Sorry, right, have a great day, and um, here come the boom. Hey, what is up, everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to a video. I am going to continue inking this. It is nighttime, well, sort of, 647. And, uh, yeah, I was excited to get back on this, so I finished my quote-unquote work day. Well, not quote-unquote. <laughs> I finished my work day. Now I'm getting back to me, my time, our time. So, yeah, I want to keep going on this. So uh, I'm just grabbing out pens and whatnot. Okay, let's do this. 
going with the Copic multi liner. I'm going to start inking some of the belt. This will be a Patreon exclusive that will um, eventually get to. Uh, let me just adjust the camera, make sure that uh, I don't want to wreck this video halfway in it. Make sure this thing is mounted good. Okay. Yeah, I, um, I think the multi liner, uh, people were warning me that the. the ballpoint pen it might not not age well and it's a good call so i'll look into it though and see what what the deal is with that and then yeah there was a lot of like really interesting posts and i definitely appreciate the encouragement and uh kind words so thank you <laughs> so remember the goal i just read um russ's comment about um he was saying like, oh, it's crazy that you're um, thinking like looser styles and yet you're you're doing it so precisely. But remember, the, the goal is take it to a certain level of finish with that and then go bananas. <laughs> it's like if the foundation is strong, then I feel more confident going completely bonkers. Well, I probably won't go completely bonkers on this first one, but... Um, this promo but uh, yeah you know what I mean it's like I'll feel a little more confident if the the foundation is is pretty pretty rock solid you gotta really pay attention here it's like I can't just phone it in it's funny it's like I really have to go okay what was this thing so many little shapes it's 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 different than inking other people. I, me I kind of mentioned that before, but I mean, this is definitely a higher level of um, sort of, what would you call it, difficulty. That was the word I was looking for. Um, and the one thing I was going to say, too, is because I mentioned it a, a couple of times in the video in passing that, like, um, how... Uh, anxious I can get when I ink my own stuff. But the the one thing that I, I always kind of try to remind people and, and, and myself included is um, the one great thing is when you're penciling, you really can't make a mistake. You can definitely make wrong choices and have things that don't work. But but the nice thing is, is with pencil, I mean, you can always erase, you know what I mean? Like, so you can always take it out. Um, and, and, you know, obviously it's not like digital where you can sort of go back to a, a exact point in time and if you mess up an eye um you know it's unfortunate because you're not gonna be able to get it back by just hitting command z a few times or trying something on a different layer but um yeah but with the inks it's like if i've got a nice drawing down i start inking it then i get a little like oh gosh okay like don't mess this up rich but I, I only get it kind of with my own stuff. I can't really think of too many. I mean, I think there's a little bit of anxiety when you um, are first starting to ink someone that you've never worked over. But past that, I don't get too worried about it. These are different clips and stuff like that. She's got almost like a climbing belt on. So there's a lot of um, what they call S hooks. This is this like a button. Sorry, this is small stuff. So I, I'm like, this is what I was talking about. Like if I was pen, if I penciled, uh, and was like like recording or streaming, I probably wouldn't say anything. <laughs> it's 
I get like so into it. I'm like, I need to really pay attention. It's funny too, because I shot a video the other day and just at some point I completely <laughs> forgot that I was filming and I didn't talk for like 10 minutes. And, and then I was like, oh crap, I'm, I'm actually, I'm shooting a video right now. I did pull the pencils out again too, so they're sitting kind of to the the right of me. I, I can't see them right now, but if I need to refer back to them, I can I can look and kind of see. Yeah, but these are all hooks that like kind of hook over the belt. She's got some very serious business she's gonna be taking care of. She needs to be prepared. <laughs> so <coughs> I've got like um what should I do next? I think I'll do this. This is kinda like a like a pistol. It's kind of a funky little gun. I just kinda made it up. It's it's like <laughs> if I if I was gonna use it in the book I would probably do a little tiny bit more research on it, but this is just like a kind of a cornball design. It's been it's been nice. I mean, I, honestly, like uh, all the work that I've done on Patreon has really. Um, made me more disciplined with um, my own stuff because you know like if when I went through the perspective stuff or we'd work on something there um, you know I have to kind of I have to go over it I have to present it and then you kind of look like an idiot if you don't apply it <laughs> to your own stuff so it's like I creates a level of responsibility that I would have never expected, but it, it, it falls on two different point parts of it too, which is one, it's like, you know, if you're not a teacher and you have no art education background other than what you've learned kind of on your own and you're trying to share it with other people that are learning, um, you know, you want to make sure that you're not giving at least too much misinformation. <laughs> I don't know. Do real teachers do that? <laughs> um, and then, uh, yeah, like, and then after, it's like, well, you took the time to, like, show everyone this. You should probably freaking apply this to your own self. So, put these kind of wraps around the um, actual... Uh, like the handle of the gun, so I need to, or this part of the gun. It's funny because doing this reminds me of um, the Megadeth story that I penciled for Heavy Metal Magazine. Um, I had to draw like astronaut suit a whole bunch of times, and uh, I got pretty good at the the sleeves and stuff like that, like the wrinkles in the suit. It was like at first I was so like I was going oh man this is gonna be crazy I've never really drawn something like this but then after I did it a few times I could knock it out pretty fast okay and then I can wrap around here a little bit oh. let's just make sure my other arm is in the frame I was like said I, I generally when, normally when I work I hunch over the page pretty hard so I have to sit up when I do these but then it's like also the camera in a spot where it's I have to kind of work around it which is fine I don't mind the I get like video envy when I watch like someone else do a tutorial and they like have this like nice camera angle I'm like man I need to, I need to be better at this
what was funny is because as I was looking at this, um, kind of watching the video back, I, I had done some samples a long time ago just for myself, but the intent when I was doing them was to present them to humanoids. And uh, I did um, like pretty like a sci-fi lab with like this crazy like ray gun thing. It kind of reminded me of some of that stuff. So it's funny, it was pretty long time ago, but I still draw the same. Just I think I know a lot more now. Well, I know I know I know a lot more. It's not even close. <laughs> Back then I would fake almost everything. Okay, I'm gonna grab a my circle template thing for the gun. The, I want to get one. Just the exterior lips. I want to make sure that this is. Pencils, just for one sec. Ding, ding. Oh, the pencils are so much easier to see than the blue line. <laughs> it's like so much darker. I used, I think, an H lead. I can't remember. This is all black. It's pretty cool working on it too because uh, I was telling people that like the more that you work on your own art when you look at other art you get a lot more out of it so it's like the next time I look at like someone that draws like a some sort of like a sci-fi gun I'll really pay attention closer and come up with new ideas and stuff like that based on what I'm seeing that I'll have a reference for while I'll go oh yeah I put that stupid thing there and then they did this, which actually looks way better, so I should probably think more like that. These are little, um, sort of like release clips I put on this thing. Not really based on anything. It's funny, because a lot of my stuff, I think it looks like mountain gear a little bit. I have no foundation for it. I just kind of faked it. I do the little, um, sort of, what do you call it, like, uh... I don't know, they all look like lightsaber tubes or something, and then you just put other details on them. Yeah, I started putting these like clips on them. It seems to work. Uh, like it looks pretty decent. I said I am filling in the blacks as I go along on this because I need to keep the balance of the composition looking good to me so it's really important that I know where the um the like light and dark is it's actually funny because when I would do my black drawings I would always work on them at night and the one thing that working at night you have an advantage of, of of during the day is I think you get a better read on the um the contrast levels because I would turn off almost all the lights in my office except for one and then put the piece like a few feet away from me and look at it almost like it was like a a black light poster or something and and 
get an idea of how it would look. It definitely helped. Okay, so that's all coming down. I can fill in the blacks right here too. There's a little bit of the belt buckle coming down right here. It was funny for a split second I wanted to put rosary beads like I've because I've drawn Hellboy a couple of times not a lot but I think I've drawn him like three or four times and he's probably like I've drawn his utility belt the most of of like a fantasy character but I always put like hanging beads on it so it was like I was like oh I could do that on her she doesn't really need him though The other thing I'll do to keep the blacks looking consistent is because I filled in this area with brush, I outlined it with black ink, like a pen ink, but I'll, I'll fill it in with brush ink because it'll have the same look. If you fill it all in with a rapidograph, it can look a little more scratchy. It can sometimes be more shiny. Um, and uh, what I try to do is have an original that looks pretty balanced too so yeah if I'm filling in my blacks with with a brush and I'm using like a particular ink meaning like the ink that's in my ink well then I try to keep that similar the other thing that you kind of want to fight is the urge to keep going back over black areas again and again and again because it'll do the same thing it can start to make the ink look shiny and it builds up like a weird gloss on it and then it won't look consistent with like the other ink. So you don't want to get too, too noodly with stuff, but you know, it's not going to matter. There's going to be like, there's going to be tons of speed lines and like these, like, like almost like flare missiles flying in. And there's a lot of stuff going on that you can't really tell you're going to see, um, in the final piece and splatter and all kinds of stuff. So, this piece is going to get pretty wild. You're just seeing the um, foundation. It's funny, whenever I hear those birds outside, I don't know if you could hear it, but it always reminds me of um, Resident Evil 1, the um, that like picture gallery where the, <laughs> the crows or whatever, they're like in there and they're like... Kah, kah. The other thing I'm going to do in just a second is the um, the ink that's on her butt is still wet. I'm going to grab my brush and make sure that I... Well, it's drying pretty fast now. I think it's going to be dry in a sec. I don't want it to dry with like a wet spot in the middle of it because then that'll make like a weird like little anomaly too. I can just do this right now and kind of make sure that it's... I had it setting on top of my ink water. <laughs> Here, sorry, the thing drifted a little bit. Okay, we're gonna feather her leg and then we're gonna go up and work on the pouches. 
and uh, some of the other chords. And I'm using the 01 micron, I mean uh, multilinear. Fill in the black on this leg too. It was funny because like normally I probably would have ate dinner by now, but because I wanted to work, I decided not to eat until after I was done working. So it doesn't slow me down, make me burned out, you know. Cause like that's the worst, is you're like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna draw after I eat dinner. Then you eat dinner and you're like, oh man, I just want to sit and chill. But you can see the level of patience that you have, and it's tempting to want to rush and see things finished, you know? But you just have to chill, make sure that you're focused the whole time that you're working on it, and give that last half of the effort that you put into it the same amount of attention and focus as you do your first half. Because if you start rushing and get careless, you know, I mean, your drawing can only take so much, um, you know, like not great choices and areas that maybe aren't as, as like you as others. So I hit that still. At some point, I'm probably going to have to put a shadow here. I'll show you where. I think this is going to drape like that. And that area right on that butt cheek is going to be black. So this is just way too big of a thing of white. It looks weird to me. I'll see later that I don't need to worry about it right now. It's just something that when I watch the video back, I'll be able to tell. But yeah, that's looking weird. Okay, so let's do the pouches. Button, button, <laughs> strap, seam, seam, and edge, shadow, and that's a nice looking strap. <laughs> I'm going to put a little crease here. 
because it's holding the material so it's like an indents, you know. The lip, again, the seam, like that, and then it's the back edge. The second pouch right here. Okay. And this is the upper edge of that pouch. Oh, that was close. Well, not close, but that ink is still a little tacky on her leg. It's the risk of doing narration and inking, is you can make a boneheaded mistake because you're you're paying attention, but it's just weird. It's like you do kind of drift when you're doing it like this way, because I'm, I'm you know I'm thinking about the camera angle and just little weird stuff that goes on. But yeah, I'm really, really excited about this. This is so cool. Um, I can't wait to have one full sort of piece out. And then just keep knocking them out. It's really not that much work to do a book. It sounds like it is. But like, man, if, if it's looking kick-ass, you'll be into it. And the freedom being able to do it and all that kind of stuff it all just would be you know awesome Oh yeah, I put like a highlight there on his, her leg. Okay, so let's do this. I'm gonna finish this belt buckle. Now we got her, the belt. Picture the belt like one of those, <clears throat> kind of like military belts that they would wear that um, have the um, kind of beveled edges on it. Like you'd see in like World War II. Okay, so and then this is all black and gray. Check the pencils. Yeah. I don't think that highlight's gonna even need to be there, honestly. I think what I could do, I'll have it fade. I'll just do this. It'll look like just a little highlight in there. <clears throat> and is the side of that pouch black or is it a... yeah this is all black okay we'll fill the black too black black and more black
time is that? 31? Okay. So since I finished this, I'm going to stop this video because at 30 some odd minutes, the camera will shut off and want me to edit the video. So I'll turn it into two files. So for some reason, it stopped. It recorded a video today. It was 38 minutes. It's like the first time that this phone's ever done that. I was amazed. But usually it stops like 31 to 33 minutes. It'll keep recording, but it just uh, it creates a new file. And then I can't upload it as one thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fade this. Just tight, tight patch. Okay, cool. And that's going to be it for this video. Put little cast shadows in here really fast. A reflection. Okay, cool. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Oh, sorry. So we're getting making some headway on her. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Have a good one. All right, cool. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully that was fun to check out. Here's the final again. And uh, I'm just going to slap this on the end of the, the original YouTube video. So it'll actually be a re-upload. Um, but uh, past that, this video was shot a few months ago, I think. Something like that. Her, She's fun to draw. She really is. It was a lot of work figuring it out. And, and um, the final costume in the book is a little bit different than this. So I wanted to leave some surprises. It was funny as I really was actually quite hesitant to show too much of her. I had originally wanted to do it mostly in silhouette. Um, and uh, so when I did this version of it and I lit her up more, I kind of was like, all right, just come up with something that looks cool for this. I loaded her with it. I mean, she's got weapons everywhere. I mean, I don't even know how many guns is she have. <laughs> <laughs> let's count I see one two three I think there's a fourth one right here she's got this knife she's got this like katana she's got explosives um she's got the blaster kid set up which is her basically like nuclear device that she's uh been fused with and and all the vents and <laughs> she's quite quite the uh <laughs> quite the armory and uh you could do a whole issue of of uh, that would actually be cool to do an armory and break down all of our gear the one thing that i really actually was funny as i was thinking about this yesterday is i want to try to avoid things that i've seen um i mean it's impossible to do it across the board but like i wanted to try to come up with some some gear on her that is unique to her and something that like when you see it you go you know I don't know if I've ever actually seen that on like a lot of characters. It's important to me because it's just it's easy to uh you know mimic uh, someone else. You know what I mean like like just grab someone else's comic and try to try to copy gear that they put on them but uh so I I actually do spend time trying to design little bits and pieces of the stuff more and more now as I've gotten better at drawing. So right, have a great day. Hopefully that was fun to watch and uh, I will be back with more Blaster K content very very soon. Thanks. Bye.